Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it today. Today I wanted to talk to you about what type of service qualifies you for VA benefits, right? So do you have to be a wartime vet? Do you have to have been in theater? You know, for many of you watching this channel who are already service connected for conditions, you know the answer, right? No, you don't need to be. You just need to have served in the military, okay? The VA doesn't care whether or not you went overseas or not. It, they only care about the condition that you have and did it manifest during your time in service. So I'm going to dive into this a little bit. Please hit that thumbs up for me, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. It helps to really, really get this information out there to those that need it. And again, I know most of you watching this already know this, but the reality is, is that 70% of vets out there have no clue. And so that's what we're here to do is collectively, the ones of us that, that know need to help those that don't know, right? We need to, you know, reach out the helping hand, pass down the whatever, the knowledge, whatever it is, right? However you want to say it, that's kind of, it's our responsibility in my, in kind of my mind. So, because the, the, the VA does not do a good job and has not done a good job at disseminating the information that we needed when we were getting out of the military, right? DOD sure as heck didn't do anything for us, regardless of what branch you were in, typically. Um, now, things have changed a lot, right? I got out of the Marine Corps in 97. I got out of the Army National Guard in 2015. Um, I had to think. Uh, so got out, got out of uh, the Guard in, in 15. So, uh, th you know, even in the last seven, eight years, um, you know, things have gotten a lot better, but they can still be even better. And nobody, nobody at the end of the day will do better for each other than ourselves, in my opinion. So anyway, with that, let's dive into this a little bit. So the way that the VA looks at this now, obviously, we'll get the obvious one out of the way. If you have PTSD from combat, obviously combat is... You, you, you need to have had combat in order to have, you know, PTSD that is a result of your combat, right? Now, can you have PTSD from other things? Of course you can, right? There could have been some horrific uh, situations that happened to individuals here, even stateside or even overseas, just in, just not at war, right? Like I went to Japan, right? I was in Japan for a while. There was no war going on in Japan when I was there, thank God. <laughs> um, so when I was there, there was none. Um, and uh, but but horrible things happen and unfortunately and it's a very sad situation uh, so the reality is is that the VA is simply looking for I like to break it down into three things one time and service two a diagnosed condition because we're all super good at diagnosing shoot we're even good at diagnosing each other right doesn't mean anything well unless you're a doctor if you're not a doctor then it doesn't mean anything. You actually have to go to a medical uh, professional, a doctor, and have them uh, give you a diagnosis for a condition. Now, here's my thing with this. There's a couple things that should happen. One, your condition that you're being diagnosed for should be either chronic in nature or have some sort of residual effects, right? So let's just use migraines. If you had one migraine in your life and no more, that's not chronic migraines. You had a migraine once, and then even then it's suspect, right? Was it really a migraine or was it just a bad headache? So your condition, whatever it is, must, 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 must be chronic in nature or have some sort of residual effects, okay? So here's an example. You break your arm, right? You break your arm, they fix you 100% good, there's no chronic issue there. You broke your arm, yes, that sucked, but they fixed you and now you're good. If the break was further back to your elbow and now you have a range of motion issue, well, now you have some sort of residual effect, okay? That's the difference. So between not having anything and then having something, right? So that's the residual effect piece. Chronic, you know, I get migraines you know, twice a week, okay? Get migraines twice a week and they last, you know, four to eight hours, um, each, then, then that's chronic. It's an ongoing, consistent thing. 
So that's the second thing, diagnosed condition. So one was time and service, gives us a window of opportunity. Two is diagnosed condition, should be chronic in nature, have some sort of residual effects. If a doctor wants to prescribe you something, say yes. Because your condition is bad enough for a prescription of X, you should receive that prescription. Now, some people have different thoughts on taking medication and some people try to stay away from it for whatever reason, whether you have an addictive personality, whether you're just trying to keep your body clean and trying to go more natural route, use homeopathic stuff, whatever, that's fine. Go down that road and, and try that if that's what you want to do, right? I mean, you're, you're, you have to do your own due diligence and research as far as, as what type of medical care you need right? I'm, I'm definitely not a doctor and I'm not telling anybody to do anything. But the reality is, is that if a doctor wants to prescribe you something, say yes, because your condition is bad enough for that. Whether you take that medication, that's on you and, and whatever you decide to do with whoever else you're talking to. The reality though, is that not all, but some conditions within the VA's rating schedule will have different um, qualifiers. And in some cases, if you are in receipt of a prescription, then you warrant a higher rating in some cases. So if a doctor thinks you should be on something, then, then you should take that, that um, uh, prescription so you have that annotated. So first two things. One, time and service. Two, diagnosed condition. Three, the third thing is the nexus, the link between the two, okay? The link between the two is simply proving to the VA in some fashion that your condition either manifested during your time in service, like migraine headaches. One day I didn't have migraines. The next day I started getting migraines. And from then on, I've ever, I've just always had migraines, right? So manifesting during your time in service or there was some sort of a uh, in-service event that caused a condition to you. Um, you know, maybe you were on a, a forced ruck march um, with, you know, whatever, 100 and something pounds on your back and you tripped and fell and jacked up your arm or your knee or your back or, or whatever, right? Um, or s some piece of equipment landed on you, whatever the case is, right? The main thing is, is that you're proving that your diagnosed condition started during your time in service. However it started, it started, right? Whether it was caused by service or just showed up, whatever, the VA doesn't really care as long as you can place it in that window of opportunity. That is the important part. That is the gold, okay? Once you are able to establish those things, here's my time in service, here's my diagnosed condition, and here's my nexus, once you establish those three things, your claim should be awarded. But then what? Anybody know? They got to figure out what rating you're going to be. Okay, if you did not supply the VA with the information they need to rate you appropriately, then in the CNP exam, that is going to be where they leverage all of that information they gather from there to, to determine what your rating should be based on whatever you tell that CNP examiner in your 10 or 15 minutes or whatever you have with them. So very, very important to study your schedule of ratings, which I've talked about many times be uh, before, and there's videos on it, and I will continue to preach that one. Uh, but with that, I'm going to end there and just remind everybody that you don't need to be a combat veteran in order to receive VA compensation. All right, with that, thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.